What's going on guys? Welcome back to DCS World and again my tutorial series for the A10C Warthog. In this particular video we're going to just take a brief and really basic overview look at the some of the functions of the MFDs, the multifunction displays. So we've got one on our left side and our right side as we've toyed with a little bit already. And we're also going to talk about the HUD, the heads up display. So firstly, let's look at the MFDs and the MFDs are deceptively simple. Okay. They look more daunting than they actually are. All right. Basically everything is based on pages. So we're going to look at our left hand side MFD real quick here. I'm going to aim my camera at it and then hold it there. Okay. So we're nice and steady. So as you can see, you know, you might not know what this is, but this is the, we're currently looking at the TAD page, the tactical awareness display, and I'll do a whole video on the TAD itself, but just for now, know that this is the tactical awareness display. And what we can do, there we go. Wasn't sure why that was showing. So the tactical awareness display shows our map and whatnot, but uh, we've got some other pages we can do. So we see that the uh, TAD is highlighted. That's our currently selected page. If we use this button here labeled DSMS, that switches pages. This is the digital stores management system. This is how we control all our weapons. Again, more info in a future video. This is our TGP page for our targeting pod, the lightning targeting pod. Also, full future video on this. And then our stat page, which just kind of gives a bit of a status test on the in-flight computers and stuff. You won't really look at this that much, so don't worry about it. We can select these different pages using the buttons at the bottom. So that's actually really simple. We can also use the HOTAS Cooley Hat switch, which I hope you have bound. Again, check out Chuck's guide linked in the video if you haven't bound all of your controls yet or know where your Cooley Hat is. But if we go Cooley Hat left, short press, that is just click it momentarily, we can cycle through them using the Cooley hat, which is a HOTAS button. Okay, and that's an easy way to switch between the pages without having to take your hands off the controls and go over here and press the buttons. Though you can press the buttons if you want to. Okay, let's look over on the other MFD real quick. Get centered and hold it there. We've got a few different pages available. We have the TGP page again for our targeting pod. We have the MAV or MAV, that's not, that's not NAV as in navigation, that's MAV with an M. This is our Maverick missile control page. So if we had Maverick missiles, this would be where we would utilize them. Our CDU repeater page, we saw briefly in the cold start procedure. So this is a, once again, a repeat just a copy page of what you see down here. And once again, we'll do a full video on some more in-depth functions of the CDU later. We also have the message page. Uh, a fun little feature of the A10C is that other A10Cs in the game can actually send messages and data to each other. And that's how you would receive them here. I'm going to do a full video on this. This is actually called the Situational Awareness Data Link or Saddle. And again, that's a full video. And just like with the other MFD, we can use the Cooley Hat command with just a momentary press now. Since this is the right MFD, we would use the Cooley Hat switch to the right. So click, 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 click. As you can see, we are just cycling through the pages. Okay. And that's the basics of how you sort of switch between pages on the MFDs. Uh, each individual MFD page has other buttons available located around the border of the MFD for each individual page. The MAV has some buttons. The TGP has some extra buttons there. The messages page has some buttons. 
and the same would apply for the functions over here. And everything is sort of context sensitive, so these option select buttons, or OSBs as they're called, will have different functions depending on what page you're on. And getting used to that, you know, it's a matter of just kind of practicing with the systems and remembering what the different things do. And again, uh, future videos will go more in depth on some of the individual functions of each of these pages. Let's move and look up now at the HUD. So let me get, let me just center my camera, zoom in and pause. Okay. So we're looking at the HUD, the heads up display it has a few different bits of information that we know want to look at. First of all, the HUD can be in a couple of different master modes, uh, bound to the HOTAS usually in the real airplane. And if you've got a HOTAS, I hope you have this button bound, uh, or you can reference the keyboard command for it, but it's the HOTAS master mode button. And if we click that, we cycle through the different master modes of the HUD. So we have a nav mode, which is obviously as, it's, as it sounds, it's navigation. We have guns mode, so if we're going to employ our glorious GAU-8 Avenger, we would go into guns mode and then we get some symbology for the gun. CCIP, this is a weapons release and weapons delivery mode, which I will cover in much more detail later on. CCRP is another weapons release mode, which I will cover in detail later on. And then we're back to nav mode. Generally, when you're flying around, you're going to be in nav mode until you actually need to employ your weapons. And then you'll switch to other modes. But for just flying around and navigating, obviously, you'll want to be in the navigation mode. So just to briefly go over some of the symbology, what we have here on the HUD, we have what's called the pitch ladder. Okay, The pitch ladder tells you how many degrees above or below the horizon your airplane is going. So since we're on the ground right now, it's a little tough to see above the horizon since the horizon is here. But if we look here, we've got five degrees, 10 degrees, 15 degrees down the bottom. That's how many degrees below the horizon you would be pointing. And because it's a dashed line, you know it's below the horizon. If we could see above the horizon right now, which we cannot, you would see five, 10 and 15 degrees, etc., with solid lines that tells you how many degrees above the horizon your nose is pointing. In the center here, it's a little hard to see because it's not moving around, but right here on the horizon, where my crosshair is, where my mouse is, there is a function of the HUD called the total velocity vector or TVV. And that is an indication of your airplane's actual path. You may notice this if you get in the airplane and just start flying around, this thing kind of wobbles and moves around. It's because it's constantly updating the actual path your airplane is flying. So if you draw a straight line from your viewpoint through that TVV to somewhere either on the ground or wherever it's going, that's the path your airplane is currently flying. Okay, and that's very helpful for getting your path set up if you want to line up for landing on a runway or you want to get your heading pointed at a specific point in space, things of that nature. Um, and you'll, it's just very, it's a very useful, it's a very useful piece of symbology. What you see right here, this little box with the 140 and the 0, 0.0, that's representative of your current steer point. Uh, I'm going to do a whole video uh, with regards to basic waypoint navigation, and I'll explain steer points uh, more in depth there. But what this piece of symbology is, is it's just a representation in space, as your HUD sees it, of the current steer point. Okay, and it gives you a degrees towards that steer point. So, for example, 140 means the current my currently set steer point is 140 degrees off to in this case the right of where i'm currently pointing and i will explain much more about steer points later on as i mentioned we move down a little bit uh let's see 0 0.9 don't worry about it doesn't mean anything um this number 50 here 
This will be representative of your current airspeed in indicated uh, knots. So knots indicated airspeed or nautical miles per hour. Uh, it is representative of what your airspeed indicator here shows as well. And on the HUD, it doesn't go below 50, even though we're stopped at a standstill right now. It doesn't go below 50 for reasons. But once your airspeed climbs above 50, you'll see this go up. On the right side, we have 100 here. This is our current altitude above sea level. It's based on what our altimeter here is reading. So you can see that's at 100 feet. We see 100 feet there as well. Below that, you would have a vertical velocity, uh, some additional symbology there. Uh, below that, we have 10R. Now, this is our current radar altitude. So most of these modern planes have what's called either a radio or radar altimeter. And what that's telling you is it's telling you your altitude above the ground using a sort of radio antenna that's sh shooting radar beams down at the ground and then bouncing back up to sort of range your distance from the ground. And right now it says our radar altimeter or our radar altitude is about 10 feet. And that's just roughly the distance, like that's about as low as it can go. It's probably closer to about two feet or so right now, but we're on the ground. This tells you your altitude above the ground and this is effective up to 5,000 feet. Down here we see STPT. This stands for steer point. Uh, I mentioned steer points before, but what this piece of the HUD here is actually representative of is your current sensor point of interest or what is providing your sensor point of interest or SPI. And I'm going to go into a full docket of video, possibly several videos on the idea of sensors and sensor points of interest. But for right now, just know that our SPI is the steer point. But for example, if our targeting pod was providing the SPI, this would say TGP. I'll point this out again in a later video. With regards to the current steer point, we have some additional symbology on the lower right portion. This is showing us our currently selected steer point. If it has a name, in the case of this one, it's init posit or init posi for initial position, since we don't have any other steer points right now. But if we did, they would show up here. And it would tell us our distance to that waypoint, our time to reach that waypoint, and our time on target, things of all that nature. So that's just a basic look at the HUD. Again, I mentioned the master modes have some additional symbology that I will go through when we actually do some weapons employment. But for now, that basically just, uh, that about covers the basics that you need to just sort of understand what the HUD is showing you. And uh, I'll leave it there. So until next video, I'll see you later.